ready to go. So welcome everybody. Welcome to our uh, Q&A webinar uh, across Canada. So joining today with Vicky, welcome. Hi everyone. And uh, today we're here to talk about, um, I guess some of the key points about the AIB MBA, what makes us special. Um, and we've also got a special guest, Callista, um, in Canada, who's a current student of ours. So we're really looking forward to and very excited to talk to her about her journey so far. She's in the end of her first stage, just about, which is really, really awesome. So yeah, um, absolutely. Thank you all for uh, giving us a little bit of your time. And um, yeah, it's gonna be great to collaborate, ask a lot of questions. So get your thinking caps on and um, learn more about the program. So first I'll start with Vicky about yourself. So hi everyone, my name is Vicky and I'm the Senior Course Advisor here at the Australian Institute of Business and I work in Team Canada. I'm also currently studying the MBA myself, so I've just completed the postgraduate diploma in management, um, so I can definitely help as well with answering any questions that you may have. Um, but yeah, that's a bit about me and I've been here for a while. Awesome, <laughs> good, good. And I'm Robert, um, so I look after the, the Canadian team here at AIB. So I actually personally completed or graduated from the MBA back in 2019. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been a great journey and um, uh, looking forward to obviously now learning a little bit more about Callista and uh, helping with all your questions. But um, but it's what the fantastic thing though about our Canadian um, audience is we now we've got over 800 students in Canada. Yeah, which trying. Is, it's amazing. Yeah, so we're gonna learn a little bit about that. And I guess what I'm really curious to learn about is um, you know, why AIB? Why should somebody choose AIB in Canada? Which is going to be interesting. Um, now, Callista, now I hope you're there. Um, I think we might have to. Yes. Yes, um, I'm here. Welcome, Callista. We're really keen to learn more about you. So, um, yeah, I'd love to hear a bit more about yourself and um, your background and introduce yourself. For sure. So, I am a current student. I'm about halfway through my fourth course now, um, and I started it back in April. Um, I am a manager of marketing strategy and planning, so that's sort of my field that I'm in. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody would have. It's, it's fantastic. Oh, <laughs> sorry. We're just, um, sorry, we're just trying to figure out. That. Great to have you here. Um, and you're looking really, really well. It was, it was great to, to catch up yesterday as well, a little bit, learn a little bit more about your story, but we'll, we'll go through some of the key points shortly. Um, but yeah, so what we might do is we'll kick off. We've got a bit of a, a presentation that we'll run through very quickly, um, and then we'll get through to the fun stuff, but Callista will learn more about you and do a bit of a Q&A. And um, with the wider uh, group shortly, what we'll do is we'll open up to a gallery view. So just let us know if you don't wanna be on a potential recording later down the track, um, just put your screens, um, just hide yourself <laughs> or let us know. And um, yeah, so we'll open up to a bit of a gallery view and a, and a little bit more of a, a, a conversational Q and A with, with us all. So if you guys have got any questions, please reach out. Oh, and before we forget, we've got Lisa with us. Uh, on our chat today. So Lisa is also in our team. She'll be there on the, um, uh, the, the Zoom chat to answer any questions that you might have or as they come up. And uh, Lisa will also reach out and let us know if there's anything important that we should cover as well. Definitely. So ask any questions, put them in the chat, or please feel free to speak out and ask some questions along the way. Mm. Um, we'd love to hear them all. I just want to check, can everyone hear us well? Is it okay? The volume? Yes. Yep. Thumbs up. Okay, perfect. That's good. And can everyone hear Callista clearly as well? I hope so. Yep. Okay, great. All right. Let's make sure that we've got that right first. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. So there's always a few technical issues, isn't there? No, nothing ever goes smoothly. But anyway, let's kick off. So um, let's uh, run through some of the key points that um, may have make ARB who we are and what makes us unique. Um, so it's true. So we're the number one online provider in Australia, which is fantastic. And we've been now working for what, uh, over 30 years working with students, mm -hmm. yep. which is, so we're not certainly not new kids on the block, but um, in Canada, how many years now do you think we've been working about with students? 
seven seven years. Yeah, which is great. So extraordinary growth in um, in the Canadian uh, neck of the woods, um, and it's been fantastic to to um, I guess really see our presence grow across yeah. Canada. It's been very exciting. And as you can see, so on the screen, you can just see there that we are fully accredited, internationally recognised. So specifically in Canada, we're also registered by KenLearn. So that's a Canadian government body there in Canada. Mm. So it just means that you can use your qualification there. The next step is like your doctorate, your PhD. So um, yeah, that's why we've got a lot of students there studying with us. Yeah, and as we'll say before now, over 800, which is extraordinary. So, and, uh, and we'll get to some of those, I guess, key points that why well, we think that um, Canadians too, that's when Calista will no doubt talk about her experience and um, what's made it so, so awesome. So yeah, we've introduced ourselves. So that's myself and Vicky. So thank Perfect. you. Perfect. And we have our special guest <laughs> and current student as well, Calista, and she's introduced herself too, which is great. And what I'm really excited to, so Calista actually works for Western University in um, Ontario. So I'm very curious to see why she chose an Australian university. So we'll get to that. So let's let's have a look at um, very briefly some of the things that I guess we think that makes us um, unique and um, I guess special and the fact that we are well and truly designed for online. Now, Vicky, you can talk to this firsthand because you are a current student. Um, so talk to us about some of the things that you feel makes us unique and specifically designed for online. Yeah. So our MBA is designed for working adults. So that's number one. So it is designed so that you can obviously work full time, um, have other commitments while you're doing your studies. Um, we want you to be able to excel in your career and you know, be able to move up. Um, and I, I've seen as well that Callista has actually gained a promotion. So we'll go through Ooh, that too, which is amazing. I did hear that. Yes. We're gonna get to that. So yes. all um, the great thing is that you get qualified along the way. So as you're progressing through your studies, um, you will be qualified after each of the four subjects. So you'll get your postgraduate certificate in management, your postgraduate diploma in management, and then your MBA. So it just means that you can set up those mini goals, be able to use that qualification, um, and then you know move into you know the next position, like have that promotion, and you know be able to grow while doing your studies. Mm -hmm. So that that is the way that we have designed it. Now um, with the learning obviously completely online. So it means that there isn't any, any exams. Um, it means that your assessments are all, are, all online. Um, your, um, you know, your learning materials are all, all online. And it just means that there's many ways that you can take in the learning. So you can choose to uh, read it. You can choose to listen to it. You can choose to watch it. Um, so yeah, there is many ways to, to be able to take in that learning. Um, so we will we'll go through that too and how that works and how you'll be able to, yeah. to take in your, your studies. And I think a really interesting feature there, we talk about an interactive weekly webinar. Mm -hmm. So I guess we are a, a long way away down here in Australia. So we're ahead of time. So we're talking from the future. But um, we'll talk a little bit about how that actually helps Canadians. Yeah. Interesting well, Calista, do you want to talk about how that works, like with the webinar? For sure. Yeah. So... I was really worried about the time change. Um, to be honest, that was one of my main concerns. I didn't want to miss assignments. I didn't want to miss um, webinars or anything like that. But um, once you figure it out, it's super easy to navigate and the support is incredible. And I feel like, I mean, it's evening for me right now. And I was able to select all my courses to be around 6.30 to 8 p.m. So that worked out perfectly for me in my job because I work nine to five typically. So. Um, it actually worked out in my favor. And there's lots of different class options that you can pick from too. So. Yeah, amazing. And that's it. So yeah, your, your sessions are going to be in the afternoon. So for our students, obviously in Canada, it's going to be usually after you finish work, um, like Calista said, so um, you know, you can, you'll be able to, to join the webinar. If you can't join though, so you can watch it back later on. So, you know, if you feel like, yeah, that you're working later or you're just not able to attend it, uh, feel free to watch it back whenever you like. Your online learning facilitator will post it as soon as the webinar is finished. Um, but it is great to attend. Mm. It is amazing to attend. They go through, yeah, they go through the concepts you're learning that week. They cover the assessments. So they'll really focus on the assessments, um, give you some study tips on what you should address in the, in the assessments. Um, and, you know, if you've got any questions as well, you can ask them there. 
So yeah, they are good to attend. And I actually remember back to being a student personally and some of those topics that we cover or courses that we look at, I remember governance being, corporate governance being a specific one. And I mean, I personally haven't had any experience working on a board. Um, however, it was fantastic to have some um, of my classmates um, who were working actively on board. So it was really awesome to, to hear their insights for a while. Yeah, that's um, it. And Callista, you probably get that as well. There's some areas that we mm -hmm. haven't necessarily, like I think you were talking about um, what's an area that you haven't had so much experience in that you've studied so far? Uh, finance. I am not a numbers person. <laughs> I'm very nervous for that. But honestly, the way that the courses are set up, I feel like I'll be able to handle it now. So definitely. Are you in finance now? You no, I'm actually currently in HR, um, but I have no HR experience and no operations experience either. So it, it I mean, if you study everything, bit by bit, the ways that you're supposed to attend um, the webinars when you're able to, or even go back to watch them. Um, it's really easy to understand. And the textbook just adds to that learning and it isn't um, confusing. I just find it's very straightforward. Yeah, amazing. And, that, and that's what I really wanted to touch on there. The fact that you've had areas that you've been working through in your courses so far, where you actually haven't had the first hand experience, but it's mm -hmm. probably been an awesome thing to be able to collaborate with your classmates. Uh, and talk through, um, I guess, the topics um, as you're going along and learn from them as well as your facilitator. So in that collaborative environment, which is great. Um, oh, here we are. Um, and look, the fantastic thing as, as well about being online and, and the technology changing, I mean, let's, let's be honest. I mean, I can say probably hands up here that most of the time that we're on our mobiles or cell phones, we say mobiles here in Australia, cell phones in Canada. Um, so have you, you would have noticed too over your time, eight courses in the, the I guess the learning platform being really optimised for mobile and you're probably doing more on your mobile now? Yeah, so it's definitely developed. Um, we've got like, the, the great thing about it being online is that our, our team takes on any feedback students have. Um, and one of, one of the feedback that we got was, you know, being able to have a, you know, have an app. So our app is, is great. It just means that if you're you know, driving to and from work and you want to be able to Bluetooth and listen to your, um, your modules for the week, perfect. You know, you're able to do that while driving to and from work or being at the gym or taking the kids to um, training. You can do it while doing other things. So we've got the, the application, um, which is fantastic. Do you use that, Callista? I do all the time. Um, I find... For myself, I'm on screens a lot. So even after work, if I just want to catch up on a webinar or something, I'll just put my headphones in and go for a walk and I'll listen to it that way. So I use it all the time. Yeah, I'm the same. I use it all the time too. I drive it. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I listen to it driving to and from work. That's how I take in the learning. So yeah, it's it's great. Now, now let's be honest, both of you. And, and look, I remember back in the day, for both of you, do you no doubt the, the uh, morning or the evening when you're getting um, assessment results released? Have, have you not been there with your cell or mobile phone going, refresh, mm -hmm. refresh? Yes. What's the grade? Refresh, refresh. It's good, isn't Definitely. it? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to, good to have that. So, yeah, it's fantastic to see, though, being an online provider that we're actually developing all the time, keeping up with technology, which is great. Oops. So what we might move to is what we might cover today. Oops. The, uh, yeah, I'll just move forward. All right. <laughs> the old school with the keyboard. Anyway, so what we'll cover today um, is some key questions. So we want to learn about a bit more about what makes ARB unique to Canada and how the ARB student experience is adapted for full-time work. And as Calista and Vicky were talking about, just some ways that they adapt the technology to, to help them with their study. And we'll also cover first impressions. And Calissa, we're really keen to learn about how things are going so far, what's working well. So we'll let you talk a lot shortly. And, um, and what have you been in, implemented so far in your professional role? And um, I guess some of those successes you've had as a result of your study. So we're really keen to hear about that as well. Yeah, so, well, I guess firstly, the, um, the first question that we have here, and I guess a lot of um, our Canadian students would be asking this, is what makes ARB unique to Canada? Um, so Callista, are you able to, to expand on that there? 
Sure, sure. Um, I know for me, it was very important for me to have an accredited program. Um, so that was one thing that I, I looked for, but I did a lot of research. I went to many, many of these presentations. I went to this actual presentation back when I was looking. Um, and I liked that there were a lot of Canadians in my courses or a lot of Canadian program, but I, yeah, I found that like an international education is important to me because I was able to get diverse opinions from everyone. So I had sort of people in, you know, Toronto, uh, close to me, all over the place in Canada, but also that international experience too. Yeah. And I'm really keen to learn, uh, actually, right back from the beginning, so what made you get started? What, what, what made you take that first um, leap of faith? So you did your research, et cetera, but um, what got you to that point where it's like, right, I'm gonna start my MBA now? I think you started it earlier in the year in the, in, the, in the winter time. So what was that point? Uh, yeah, so I think for me, um, long term in my career, I want to be a director of marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like I've worked my way up quite well to where I am now, but I didn't want education to stop me from advancing. Uh, so I knew that I wanted to get an MBA and I knew that this was a great choice for me because it was flexible. So I sort of wanted to be proactive to make sure that I had everything that I had had to have <laughs> if, a, if an opportunity arose and I wasn't able to get that because of a lack of education, that would be a shame. So I wanted to get a start on that and be able to do that online. Yeah, perfect. So you wanted to set yourself up um, and, you know, be prepared of, you know, what's to come in the future, which is great. And we've got a question here as well. So did you find working full time and studying very stressful? Well, are you finding it yeah. stressful? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there are definitely times where there is a little bit of stress, but that's just, um, it's all time management. The first course, it was a little bit trying to find my flow. Um, and do things. But what has been really helpful for me is just booking that time for myself to do the work. Um, you know, you get access to the assessments and all of the course materials as soon, like you can read it all ahead if you need to. So if I have a week where I'm really busy, I sort of prepare myself in advance. Um, and there are times where <laughs> I have the plans to do that and they fall through. And I think life really happens and it gets in the way, but so far I've really been able to manage, manage it. Um, and I'm really thankful for that because it's so flexible. So um, there has been a little bit of stress at times, but it hasn't been overwhelming like I thought it would. It hasn't been like that at all. Yeah, and I guess that's the thing. It's, I mean, in the end, it's online. So the way that it's set out is, you know, you know exactly what's due when it's due, and it's your assessments. That's what you need to focus on. And let's say, you know, the first subject, leadership, there's three. But then after mm -hmm. that, there's only two. And so you'll know exactly what, when they're, you know, when they're, they're due, you'll know from the beginning. So you know mm -hmm. that, you know, if there's going to be a busy week or if you weren't able to put in the time that you thought you were going to put in, you can make up for it the following week. So that's the beauty of it being online. It's not like you have to go and attend a class um, and then you mm -hmm. get marked on, you know, not being there. It doesn't work that way. And it's the same thing with those webinars. So that's just there for students' learning experience. It's not there because you're going to get marked on that. It's just there so that you can, you know, attend, ask questions, learn more. Um, you know, it's it's there for you. So yeah, there's no there's no need to feel overwhelmed, but we completely understand because we've gone through it, especially at the beginning, like when you're not too sure whether or not you know, you're able to, to make that time, we are completely understand. We would completely, all of us understand. Um, and, and Calista, so, so you, you really did your research before you started back in January. So you're really well organized. You knew exactly what you were doing. You're ready to take the leap. So, you know, you're now nine months in and um, you've, you've just about completed your first stage, which we'll get to in a moment, that stage by stage approach and getting your graduate, postgraduate diploma. Um, so certificate, sorry. Um, but what are your first impressions? Have we have we lived up to your expectations? I hope. Yes, for sure. Um, I think from the very beginning, I of course I was nervous starting this. I was questioning if I could do it, um, and I was really worried. But as soon as I got access to the online portal, there was a great orientation program. I'm really really glad that was there because that made me feel comfortable approaching the courses. 
Um, so my first impression was pretty good. It was like, okay, this is how it works. This is what I need to do. This is the time I need to set aside. Um, and that really helped. Um, I regret taking so long to make a decision um, because even when you just said, you know, you're nine months in or you're, you're almost um, at that certificate level, it's, it has gone so fast. It has gone by so fast. I can't believe I'm at that point already. So I'm glad that it's kind of moving along, but yeah, first impressions are really good. And the support I have to say has been incredible. I've had a lot of um, support from the OLF. Um, you know, if I need help with writing skills, there's sessions for that. So there's, there's all the resources you need um, to kind of jumpstart and get involved. Yeah, good. really good. And really good point you've just made. And, and for our Canadian um, friends, and I guess the way that we approach the MBA here, and so Calista, you talked about that you've reached your certificate level. Now, the MBA here is divided up into three stages. So you've got the first four courses, which is the postgraduate. We really must emphasize that. Postgraduate certificate in management. And then your following four courses are the postgraduate diploma. And then the final four courses are the MBA itself. So that takes about two years. So Calista, you were saying that you're at that, that first stage now. So you've just about finished your fourth course. That's taken you about eight months. And you've got that postgraduate certificate just under under your belt. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think like that having those exit points if I needed them really helped me because you know like I went like I said I wasn't sure if I could do it when I started I was like I don't know if I can do this at least I can get a certificate though I'll aim for that and then now I'm at that point I'm like okay keep on going because <laughs> um, yeah it's you just get the hang of it really quick. And the key, the, the key to, to, to really, um, to that point is postgraduate. So in Canada and here in Australia, it's a postgraduate certificate, Calista, which is kudos to you. So amazing. You know, you're amazing. past bachelor degree now, you've done your, you've done your undergrad and now you're in the postgrad world. So you're right. Um, and Vicky, we're really proud of you here as well. So Vicky, you're just about your postgraduate diploma. Which is the next and step. I was just saying, Calista, I was exactly the same. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go in and just do the postgraduate certificate in management and that's it. And then here I am. I enrolled into the next, I'm doing the full MBA. You know, as soon as you start, you're like, yeah, I can do this. And you can do it. You can do it. You put the time in, you know, you just make it work for you um, and you can do it. So I was exactly the same as you. So. And those, and those milestones, um, and we can all relate, are so important because once you reach that little milestone, I always used to think it's like reaching base camp, climbing Mount Everest. You sort of reach that base camp, you're like, oh, yeah, I've done that. And you celebrate and you're like, right, I'm going to do the next four courses now. Um, so you guys have been fantastic, you know, in the journey you're on and you're achieving and getting those um, that awards and recognition along the way. So very proud of you both for sticking it out. Now, we have another question here. So we've got a question from David. So it says, one of the benefits of getting an MBA, good question, um, is expanding your personal and professional network. How has your experience been thus far with remote studying component? So how have you gone with networking? Mm -hmm. um, personally, for me, I joined, there's group chats. There's lots going on. Um, I mean, obviously you discuss everything in the webinars and you get to meet your classmates that way, but I talk to them every day. <laughs> we're actually about to finish our assignment for um, HR and we're planning like a little get together and virtually of course, um, but we're just gonna Zoom for the fun of it just to get to know each other more. So it's been really great. And I've met so many people from all over the place. So um, that networking, has been awesome. I think I've met more people probably even in this online program than I did in any of my other programs because they're not tiny little classes. So um, yeah, I've met a lot of people. Yeah, and that's the thing, like as you go through your subjects, you will actually um, have different people in your class. You're not always going to have the same people in your class. So you're going to meet people along the way. Um, that way. But then we've got our um, social media platform, like our LinkedIn alumni page, you know, that's another way of um, 
you know, networking, connecting. You can put your province in, you can put your country in, you can put your industry in. You can go on there and connect with um, with so many people. That's one way. And then we've got Facebook, private Facebook groups for each of the subjects. So that's another way that you can connect with other students. And we've got students that are studying that have graduated from more than 90 countries. So there's a lot of people that you can network with. You don't miss out on that component at all. I think, and what, WhatsApp too, Callista and Vicky. I mean, I, I didn't use WhatsApp when I was Yeah, there. WhatsApp, like, Skype, no. Zoom, there's everything. <laughs> so I get pictures of kangaroos all the time. Oh, <laughs> and I love it oh. on WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 but it's true, the technology now, and we've, we've all learned through the pandemic um, that we can connect more than ever mm -hmm. using technology. It's certainly not uh, isolated. But I was talking to Callista yesterday and um, we are looking forward for you to coming down to Australia. So Air Canada is <laughs> starting up flights again at the end of the year, mm -hmm. thank goodness. So all our Canadian friends, come on down next year and we'll go over there. That's my goal. That's like yeah. my reward for graduating. I will come to graduation and um, yeah, that'll be my trip. Yeah, well, that's another point. So usually we have graduation here. Um, I mean, we, we still have graduation, but it's more virtual right now just because of what we're all going through. Um, but twice a year we would have graduation mm -hmm. and it means that, yes, you can, you know, fly over, celebrate, like this is a massive achievement. Um, and then at the end of it, make it a holiday, like go around Australia. Mm -hmm. The graduation, um, we have one towards the end of the year. So that's our summer, your winter. So perfect time to come here. We just need to hope for travel. That's yeah, what it is yeah, right yeah. now because it, it's it very difficult right now to have a, um, yeah, a proper graduation. We are doing it more virtual right now until we can we yeah. can change that. I think, and, we'll, and you'll see us definitely in Canada most likely next year for more events and graduations um, on the Canadian side of things too. So both countries are very close. We're just waiting for those borders to open. Very exciting. But I know Callista wants to come down. If you've got a graduation in the GTA, no, no, you'll be coming down here. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't tell my family that. They might be okay with just going to Toronto or wherever it's held, but I want to go to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> but really exciting um, as well. So I did hear yesterday, and I, I really want you to share this. Um, you have received a promotion this year, I believe. So do oh, yes. well. Congratulations. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I, um, I still work for Western. I, my previous role was at Western as a marketing coordinator. Um, and I was in that role for about five years. Um, and then June, so I've been in the program since April. And then in June, I was promoted and I'm now on a different team and I'm a marketing manager. So I'm on a much bigger team. I have like a team that I manage now. Um, and that I honestly think that in the interview process, saying that I was doing my MBA was extremely helpful. Um, and I think that the, like my bosses now, my bosses now were very impressed that I was doing that. I was able to sort of apply some of the concepts I've learned already just to the work that I'm doing now. So yeah, very exciting to get that promotion. And um, I don't want to talk about pay too much, but I was given a pay raise that was unexpected because of my education and that I was undergoing the MBA. So that was awesome. Amazing. Congratulations. That's yeah, so well good. Well and, and look, that speaks volumes at your point earlier in the year when you made that decision, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do mm -hmm. it. And we hear time and time and again, and we're all human and we all share the same feelings and anxieties. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it is, it, it can be scary getting started. I mean, we have, we, we have given the choice, I think most of us would procrastinate, mm -hmm. wouldn't we? And that's not, you know, it's, it's not, um, it's, it's not unique to just one person, it's all of us. So well done for pushing past that. And as you can see, you, you got going, it's flying and you've got a promotion already, which is sensational. Promotion, salary increase, that's massive. And that's mm -hmm. the thing, that's, that's where, you know, having, you know, those, mini goals, like setting it up in a way that, you know, get the postgraduate certificate and management done. Not only do you get that qualification, it creates more opportunities for you, mm -hmm. for you to move up, for you to change industries. You've got a qualification, you can use it. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. And so not only have you been able to get um, the salary increase and promotion already, which is sensational, um, can you talk us through perhaps, you know, some of the courses that you've worked through so far, has there been, moments where you've been able to implement as a result of your 
study on learnings, I guess, practical applications already, like in real life, has there been um, benefits there for, for you there as well? Yeah, um, well, it was funny when I was going through the interviewing process for the marketing manager job, I was taking marketing management. So that gave me a lot of concepts to even discuss in my interview. And I feel like they were relevant. They weren't just, you know, theory. It was it was really helpful to apply that to my actual job. Um, And then even like the leadership course, I feel like I'm a much better leader. I'm much more aware of other leadership styles and how other people learn. Um, So I think that that has just helped me immensely. Um, And then operations in HR, what I've been learning in that is that our organization does this every day. I didn't realize what these concepts were, but now I'm able to connect those dots Mm -hmm. and um, even feel more comfortable talking with senior leadership about it. So I feel that I'm more confident in the way that I approach my work, um, just because I have a little bit more knowledge in the back of my mind now (laughs) um, from the courses I've taken. So it's definitely been really helpful. Yeah. So I'm hearing there's an element of perhaps empowerment and also boosting your own confidence. And, and we talk a lot about within the MBA really enhancing our critical thinking. So do you feel that you've been able to articulate it, perhaps if you've had frustrations in the workplace or looking at um, policy or whatever else, that you've been able to, mm-hmm. I guess, articulate things a little bit differently and that's helped? Yeah, I think um, process in general um, in the work that we're doing. And then, of course, switching to online because of the pandemic. Um, I've learned a lot in operations. It has made me sort of critically analyze why we are doing what we're doing and ask those questions. And by doing that, we've made a lot more I guess, like found efficiencies. Um, We've been able to make things um, work a lot smoother. And um, yeah, there's been a lot of like specific things that have helped, but um, I think overall, yeah, it has been empowering. And um, it's surprising every day where I'm like, oh, I know what that term is. (laughs) I I just read about it and I'm able to kind of contribute more. Absolutely. And Vicky, I know you've had the same experience too. I mean, we work closely together and um, you've had, I guess, plenty of opportunities within your assessments where you actually physically talk about, you know, things around you in AIB as well. Definitely. That's the thing. You're able to go up to different departments, understand what they do, um, be able to, um, you know, evaluate what they're doing. Is there other ways that we could do it? How did we used to do it in the past? Can that be, can we revisit that? Um, Why didn't it work? What's changed? Like, there's a lot you get you really get involved and you really um, understand, like you said, Callista, with why why we do what we do. Um, and it's great working with the other departments and understanding what they do and then connecting it together because sometimes you just get focused on your department. Like you focus mm-hmm. on what you do without understanding, okay, why, you know, why can't this department, you know, do this or why can't they, you know, implement this or, you know, you actually understand why. So yeah. you learn a lot mm-hmm. from from the from the concepts absolutely yeah. i i want to add to all of the assessments that i've done so far have been about my workplace mm-hmm. um, different departments or divisions as you've mentioned but pretty much all of them i've been able to share with the people that i work with and they've been an actual tool for me to improve things um something you know i feel like some programs or assignments you would expect it to be like hypotheticals and it may be in the future but so far for me it's been very real life and um helpful in that way oh, that's great insights thank you vicky and thanks uh, Calista. we've actually got a question here in the chat um, that uh, vicky and Calista will be able to help with um, so what is the background of the professors and do they come from an experienced background of the field of business and did you find they lived up to their experiences and cha- and live examples to help you in the learning process right yes I'll let you go Calista <laughs> okay sure I think we're both ready to answer um I can't really speak too much about their specific experiences and um, their roles, but they definitely know the material. And in every webinar that I've had in every OLF or online learning facilitator, which would be like our professors, um, they've helped explain the concepts in a way that I understand. I feel like when you read it in a book, sometimes it can be hard to apply that to real life examples. So um, they've just really made it a lot clearer. So for me, they've definitely been incredibly valuable. And they're also, you can reach out to them 
whenever and ask those questions or even say, you know, this is what I want to do for my assessment. Does it make sense? What am I missing? Um, how can I make this stronger? And the feedback on the assessments has been really impressive. So they, they go into detail about how you can improve it. And I think that that's incredible because they could just give you a grade and say, great, you've passed or, you know, you need to work on this. But um, I've had like very valuable feedback from them. Mm -hmm. That's it. And the thing is, so with our um, academics, they're um, fully qualified. So they have their, their qualifications, but they've also worked in the industry. So they definitely work in the industry or have worked in the industry. So um, the online learning facilitators are, are also working in the industry. That's why they're able to actually give you real life examples um, so that you can take it away and apply it to your, your workplace or the company that you're, you'd like to, to focus on. So they definitely have the experience and they have the qualifications. Very important, definitely. And, and obviously, when we sort of um, think back to perhaps teaching experiences or, well, learning experiences we've had in the past, I mean, there's nothing worse than sitting in a classroom and then working with a teacher that's only been teaching, let's say, for, for 15 years. Hey, like, we're in the front line working. We're mm -hmm. professionals and we want to work with professionals um, that can actually put things within an academic framework, I guess. Yeah. Make it real, practical. That's it. And that's it. We pride ourselves on being practical. So yeah. we've got our academics, our online learning facilitators that um, are able to, you know, give, give real life examples. So they're all working. They're all um, in the industry. They're all. So let's say, you know, um, you know, financial management as a subject, you know, the online learning facilitators, they could be CFOs. They could be a part of, um, you know, boards. They, they, they actually are working professionals. So they've got their qualifications and they're also doing the um, online learning facilitation as well. So that's who you'll be speaking with. That will be your teacher. Mm. Now, and, and we're gonna get through some other topics shortly because I'm really keen to open it up to the, to the floor. Um, actually, I might leave this, Calissa, when we wrap up near the end, I'm gonna ask a question of you. What does your future look like post MBA? So. I'll get you to think about that in the background and um, no pressure, but what can you see yourself doing in five years But with an MBA, but we'll get to that. Um, but look, I, th I think we should open up to the floor. We've got some, I guess, suggested things we might want to talk about, but really keen, um, I'm conscious of time. So for our friends in Canada, um, don't be shy. We don't bite. Everything else does down here in Australia, but we don't. Um, <laughs> so please sing out. So any questions, um, everybody, please yeah. unmute. And you please can... feel free to turn your camera on if you like. This is exactly what it would be like for a webinar as well with mm. um, throughout your, your learning. So you, it would be hosted, it would, you know, it would be hosted through um, Zoom. You know, everyone would be up on their screen. Your teacher would be there. Um, they'd be going through, you know, that, that week's um, module. Um, and you'll be able to talk and all see each other. So it is like this. Yeah. It's exactly like this. Yeah. Same. So yeah, feel free to put your camera on or to ask a question. Please feel free. <laughs> and ask Calista anything. Or us. Or us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One question. So the degree, uh, it will be like recognized by the uh, different country. Is that, is that true? Yes, so we are so we are fully accredited internationally recognized. So the way that it works is you have to be accredited in your country first. So firstly, we have to be um, accredited here in Australia. So we get highly regulated to ensure that what we are delivering is at that master's level. Once you've got that, then you can have it registered, you can have it recognized in other countries. So we are internationally recognized as well. It means that it is a master's degree. The next step is the, the doctorate, the PhD, and you can do that with us or you could do it in a different country. Okay, thanks. So I understand like the MBA is online, right? But uh, uh, is there like uh, for the universe, is there like uh, there's a campus like uh, uh, we can go or, or just like uh, online teacher, online professor, professor? Yes. Okay. And for the university, is there like a physical like campus there or just uh, online? Well, we're, so there's no, um, we don't have students that are learning on campus. It is purely online. We used to. We used to have that, that um, method of learning. So we used to have, you know, on campus. You could do both. 
you know, you could, you know, do a bit of both, especially if you were here in, um, in South Australia and Adelaide. But we found that with our students, they are working adults. It's very difficult to be mm -hmm. able to do, you know, to put that time in to come in. So we've actually designed it so it is completely online. So we're in, you know, we're in a, a building and if you were to come here, we would take you around, but there is no teaching that goes on um, with, with students no. in here. No. It's all, okay. all it's all like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. All online. Yeah. Um, and I think we could probably expand a little bit further uh, as well. And, and Calista, no doubt you really did thorough research. Um, but a, a big key um, or clue to our recognition and, and accreditation is the fact that in Canada, um, whilst we're accredited in Australia, but we're actually registered with CanLearn. Mm -hmm. um, which is obviously a federal uh, body and within provinces now we've got uh, BC, Alberta, uh, Ontario, Manitoba, Nova Scotia, PEI um, and New Brunswick where and even Quebec we're looking at as well um, where you can avail um, the student loans, provincial loans. Now if we weren't recognised or accredited we wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to get the student loans in the provinces as well so that's a big clue to recognition and accreditation as well. So I think that's important for people to know Yeah. as well. Um, but, and also too, just finally on that, and there is a, there is a, um, a body called WES, if anyone's heard of that, but uh, WES absolutely recognise our, our program as well. So there is the, the equivalency of like for like. So a master's degree in Australia is equivalent to a master's degree in Canada, no different as well so i hope that i hope that answers that vincent uh yeah thank you yeah but uh, also usually uh uh how long will it take to to take the to get to the degree i mean one year two year one how well it's really up to you vincent so <laughs> you can choose to study one subject after the other and you'll have one to two break weeks in between so you can do it that way um, that will take you under two years if you were to do it that way. So you've got 12 subjects, seven weeks each um, subject. Um, or you can choose to, um, you know, fast track the MBA. You might want to get it completed um, under 14 months. That's another option. So that's where you would study two subjects at a time um, once you've completed your first subject on its own. Um, or you can actually take your time and go through it. So let's say you've got, you know, um, planned holidays or you just want to have a break. At any point, if you want to schedule two months off, four months off, six months off, you can do that. So you can actually take breaks in between your studies as well. Um, so you've got a maximum duration of four years to complete the MBA. So a lot of time to get to get the MBA completed. Okay, thank you. Well, there, Calista, we did talk about this. I think you're on the fast track now, aren't you? You just want to yeah, get it. I <laughs> Yeah, I am. I'm doing one course at a time, though, just to balance work and everything. So I started out that way. I may double up on courses later on. But um, yeah, I don't want to stop that momentum. I just want to keep going through. And get it done. And get your vacation down here to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we've got Christine. Hello, Christine. They've been great. Hi. I'm yes, glad I'm <laughs> I, I, I'm usually on, on camera all day, so yeah, I thought I'd, I'd be the first one to be on camera. Um, I'm the one at, at asking all those questions in the chat earlier, so um, I, I, you kind of answered my question already. It was really, I'm really concerned about the stress level and, you know, what if you get to a certain point, something's going on in your life and you need to take a break. I think you've kind of answered that. So I guess logically, I kind of wanted to understand how do you do that? I know uh, you mentioned you go on and there's a schedule that you put together and, and what happens if you've scheduled something, let's say you've scheduled to do two courses and now you've decided to do one, how do you go about changing your schedule? Um, is it something that you have to go and call someone or is it all completely online? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Well, we are definitely here, as you can see. So we've got a... Um, Real life staff have got a whole team dedicated in student support. Um, and Calista, I might get you to jump in at a moment and talk about probably some of the support you've had thus far. But definitely, um, you know, we know life happens, circumstances change. You know, you might decide that, you know, great, I'm going to start on a fall intake and then, 
you know, in fall next year, it's like, oh, holy dooly, this has cropped up and something, something's um, come about and you need to change things. That's okay because we know that life happens. So, you know, typically as Callista's doing right now, you'll only focus on one course at a time. But for whatever reason, if it's like, okay, this has cropped up and I didn't expect that, you can actually pop a break in, even if you're enrolled into that course. So here in Australia, we have a, a I guess, terminology um, uh, or a key date, which we call a census date. And what that actually means for students is, for whatever reason, um, I think it's about 10 days into the course yeah. or thereabouts, yeah. if something crops up unexpectedly and you need to pop a break in instead, you can let us know and there's no problems with that at all. So you don't, you know, you, um, you don't have to worry about fees or anything like that for that particular course and you can pop a break in. Or it may well be that you're trying to schedule your timetable for 12 months in advance. And it may be that you've got a conference going on or something, maybe later in the year and you're like, yeah, all right, well, I know July and August are out. I've got a family vacation and a conference to go to. So I'm actually gonna slot a break in then, but I'm gonna come back to my next course in September, October. Um, so it could be that your MBA takes two and a half years. Um, yeah. So you're in control. That's it. So there's you're a lot of control. flexibility. So if you've got, you know, let's say you've, um, you're enrolled into your subject and you get five days into it and then, you know, something comes up and you're, and you, you know, you need to push, you know, you need to change dates. You need to go into, um, you know, the next intake or whatever it may be. That's that census date. That census date means that you can change your subject without being financially impacted. That's what it means. Um, okay. Now, okay. let's say with an assessment though, like let's say um, the same, so with assessment, if you need to apply for like an extension, the same rule applies <laughs> with, um, with, you know, when you're not able to go to work. So you have to have a, um, a letter from the doctor, doctor certificate. So it's the same thing. So if you need to put in for an extension, if something was to happen and you need to put it in, in for an extension, you would do that before the due date. Um, and then you would, they would, you know, our team would assess it and, you know, you can get an extension as well. So don't always feel that you have to, because sometimes I've been in the position where, you know, I, I've been unwell, but I'm still, you know, I, I'll need to have that day off, but I'll still, you know, get my assessment done. So I won't need to withdraw or anything like that. I'll just apply for the extension. I'll put in the doctor's certificate and, you know, I might get granted a couple of days and then I can put the assessment in. So we completely understand if things come up. Um, it's just making sure, being aware of, you know, what those dates are. And, you know, your course advisor will go through it with you. So I'll go through that with you. That sounds great. And same thing, the opposite, right? If you know that you've got time, let's say at Christmas, work is slow, you mm -hmm. can fast track a course and just slot one in there at any time, right? Perfect. Perfect. That's it. That's yep, good. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's okay. And Callista, I wanted to touch on um, as well. So, you know, we're human, right? We're real people. So no doubt this year you would have had to have reached out and, and got some support. So how's your experience been thus far in terms of reaching out and getting support from our Student Central team? Um, really good so far. So I actually did have to request an extension for one of my assessments at one point. I had something come up and I just, I wasn't able to make it. I wasn't in the right mindset to make it. Um, and I actually just sent a chat message to my o OLF, which you, you can apply through Student Central and that's what you should be doing, but they were super nice and they directed me to the right people right away. Um, I have emailed Student Central about a number of things now, whether it's I don't know how to use the library. I can't figure that out. And they always direct you to who you need to go to. Um, and usually within 24 hours, but because of the time here, it's the more, it's late here when I'm working, but it's a morning for you. So I feel like it's such a quick response and it's been really good. Yeah, that's Amazing. actually a really good point. And I, and I did touch on this yesterday. And strangely enough for our Canadian cohort, um, because of the time difference for us, your evening, the, the evening before is our daytime. So we're here for you and your evening. <laughs> James, you have, James, Dean, you've got a question. Uh, hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I had a question actually about whether there is any been any connection of your graduates or people from your studies in the UK and moving on to say, go and study in somewhere like Oxford or Cambridge. Mm. Uh, great question. 
Is that with up? Like with, so do you mean to, are you asking Callista? Uh, just in, in of your program itself, of the oh, program in general. Okay. So do you mean um, connecting with other students or do you mean transferring from one course to then the other? Um, Cause you mentioned about moving on to do a PhD. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and seen, and you uh, commented on how it was recognized overseas. Yes. So, yes. Um, and being fully online and there's somewhere being somewhere like Cambridge or Oxford, which is very institutionalized and very, you know, it, it's, it's a foundational, you know, groundwork for education. Mm -hmm. And uh, so whether they allow students to come from an online education into, um, have you had anyone go that route? Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't, the qualification is no different. So with, um, I guess with Oxford University, you'd first have to find out what are their requirements? Like, what are their requirements? What are they looking for? You know, what's the GPA score? They look, that's the thing with the doctor and the PhD, they'll look at all those requirements. Um, in terms of the qualification though, there's no difference. It's exactly the same. You're not going to have on your parchment or your transcript that this is online. Mm -hmm. This is still a master's um, degree. There's no difference at all in terms of the qualification, in terms of the standard. Um, nothing at all. Um, and Callista, you'd be able to, to expand on that as well, being that you're also working at a, at a university. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, yeah, the qualification, like I wanted to make sure that this would be accredited wherever I wanted to go, even though I don't know my full plan where I want to go, but um, it was helpful to learn that. Um, working for higher education now, I think that I could have studied at Western. I could have taken a course there. I could have taken a program there as well. But I think the flexibility of the online is what attracted me to it. And like you said, the online versus in person doesn't really make a difference. And what I found now actually is the programs that I, I was looking at to go in person. I would have had to drive an hour or so to Kitchener or a couple hours to Toronto. They're all online now anyways, just because of COVID. So um, I find that uh, AIB is really organized with their program online and that has been helpful, so. No, that, that's perfect. Thank you so much. I, I up, almost up until about a year ago because of COVID, I worked for the University of Alberta. Um, so, and worked in kind of a continuing education. We had online programs and in-person programs had international student studies. So um, it's important to me as well um, from that aspect that it's recognized. And um, I had that opportunity. I've taken a few courses in a graduate program to the university um, because I'm allowed to have that um, paid for. Mm -hmm. um, but now it, it was an option to say, um, you know, I wanted to look, and like I said, so I, I guess similar to Callista, um, I could have done it at the U of A, but um, I'm, I'm seeing what you have to offer. And I had a friend who went down to study from the U of A there and another friend who went to do law down in Australia. So I've kind of enjoyed a few of the Adelaide courses. So that's my story. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Great, fantastic. Now that's, that's really awesome insight. Thank you. Thank you. Now we've got a question from Aslal. Aslal, yes, he's got his hand up. Uh, he's yes. <laughs> Hi, yes, that's correct. Uh, hi guys, my name is Aslal. Um, so I graduated recently uh, in May of this year from, uh, from an undergrad program in engineering, civil engineering. And my question is, would you recommend doing someone uh, with an engineering background, would you recommend, for example, me to do uh, an MBA right after graduation or should I get some uh, get some experience in the field and, uh, and then uh, think about doing an MBA? Is it going to bring me value if I just right, out of, uh, right after graduation I do MBA, uh, you know, keeping in mind that I don't have a business background? Is, is that something you recommend? Yes, we will let Lisa answer because she actually said it at the beginning where she was like, if only I started sooner. Yeah, I think like I definitely had the perception that I needed all of this business experience and that's what I thought going into it. But there's actually a few engineers in, um, in our program and they're in like aerospace engineering and all these diverse fields. And um, for me in marketing, like I still find everything applicable to my field. And um, yeah, even though... 
I felt like I needed that experience coming in. I'm getting it now actually in the courses. So I would just say start and <laughs> with any sort of learning, if you just graduated, continue that momentum because um, you don't want to take too much of a break and sort of think about things. But yeah, I'm glad I started when I did, but I wish I did earlier. Can I just make a comment to the gentleman that just spoke? Just want to give him another option. Um, one of the benefits of going to work after university is that a lot of the companies um, will offer the reimbursement program and they'll pay for your MBA. So you have to weigh, weigh whether or not you want to pay for it and then get the better paying job or go and get some employment, really depends on your financial situation, and then find the company that will actually pay you to, to, to complete your MBA program. So just, uh, just want to throw that out there. Yeah, thanks, Christine. I actually did start working, um, and my company does cover uh, some portion of uh, tuition fee. But I guess, you know, I, I talked to some people who've done MBA, and um, most of the people have recommended that I should get some experience uh, before before starting doing an MBA, because it's, it's, um, it's, it's going to make more sense to me and I'm going to get more value out of it if I actually understand, you know, what's going on. Because as per them, you know, a lot of times you can, it's like you can, it's, it's like a scenario based thing where you can, you know, it, it's like applicable to something that you've experienced at your workplace in the past. So, you know, this is, this is the, kind of what I heard that um, I should, I should wait for a little while, get some more experience and then, uh, jump on to uh, getting an MBA. So I just wanted to get your uh, your guys' thought on this. It's, I mean, it's really up to you. Mm. If you, like, yeah, it just depends what your goal is. If your goal is, like, to be able to move up, to create more opportunities, um, then definitely do it now. Like, now that you're on that pathway, you've, you're already thinking about it. It's something that you already know that you want to do. Then get it started because this is all about learning. You know, everyone comes in, they're all going in to learn. You know, some people do have experience in certain areas, but they're, you know, we're doing this so that we can learn. So um, you're able to learn from other individuals that are working in that industry. So a great thing to, to look at is um, you, you can look at who's actually studying the MBA with us. Maybe put, you know, go onto our LinkedIn alumni page and put in the industry that you're working in or that you'd like to you'd like to move into or grow and see who's studying nearby um, because you'll you'll network you will work with other individuals in that industry you'll learn about what they they do um, and you'll be able to to apply what you're learning not from just your own experience but you'll look at examples it's not just you know what you've gone through it's looking at examples and Callista mentioned that too she's in HR mm -hmm. right now um, and she's learning you know, she's learning, she's learning about how it works. I also have to say too, that um, a lot of the discussions in our chats as well with um, some of my uh, classmates is, it's sort of like, hey, we're hiring for this job. And it's, it's kind of become like a job board. So you do really expand that network. Um, so that kind of um, connects you to people that you would never be connected to before. Hey, thanks for answering the question, guys. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> A really great question. Um, so I hope that helps there as well. And um, thanks, Christine, for sharing and Callista. Um, now, we've also got Majid. You've, you've got your camera on there. So have you got a question I think we can help with? Or a question? Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a very great and insightful uh, webinar. Uh, uh, the question uh, that I have, uh, I graduated in 1991, and uh, as a, I'm an electrical engineer now, so, uh, and I have almost 27 years experience uh, in the construction uh, field. So if I want to apply for this uh, program, is there any prerequisite uh, courses uh, needed for applying that, uh, before that, for example, GMAT or GRE or something else? That's actually a really good question. So um, we can see you nodding there. So feel free to answer, yeah. Yeah, so you would gain entry with your qualification. Mm -hmm. So there is no GMAT requirement. Um, GMAT is another way that you can gain entry into studying the MBA with us. 
Um, so for yourself, it would be just your, your qualification, your experience. So um, providing like a copy of your transcript and your parchment. Um, and that's, what, that's actually what would gain you entry into studying the MBA. So no GMAT requirement. So with a lot of schools there in Canada, they do have the require. They add on an additional requirement of the GMAT, and that's because they want to. They only have a limit amount of students that they want to take for a class. So they'll actually add on that requirement. It's sort of the same as well when you're looking at applying for a, a bachelor degree, and you have to get you know your score in high school. I mean that's what happens here in Australia. You have to achieve a score to get into that degree. Um, so it's the same thing with the master's degree. Um, I've noticed in Canada, sometimes there is that requirement of the GMAT. We don't actually have that here in Australia. Only some providers will have that. Um, but it's just because they want to limit how many students, you know, they, they, they don't have enough teachers to be able to facilitate the, you know, X amount of students. So, yes, you won't need to worry about GMAT. It is just your transcript and your parchment from your degree. Thank you. And yeah. another question that I have, um, uh, I think it, uh, it, uh, this program uh, was delivered from uh, Australia, and there is a the time zone uh, difference between here and there because I live in Toronto, and it, it's almost, for example, you are twelve hours ahead. So if you uh, you turn at eight o'clock in the morning, it is almost it, it's eight o'clock in night at night. How is it possible to manage these uh, programs uh, in time, the different time zones? It's actually an advantage. So it, it, right now for us, it's 10.35 a.m. on Wednesday. So for us, we're going about our day as per normal. Um, so, you know, there's not only the level of support, but teaching. Um, we actually specifically will put on Canadian-specific webinars mm -hmm. and we'll put on multiple times because here in Australia, can, you know, we've actually got the, the opposite. So we have online facilitators working our evening, mm -hmm. which might end up being your daytime in, well, it would end up being your daytime in Canada. So we have multiple time slots with multiple facilitators that you can choose. Um, mm -hmm. And if you need to go to a different webinar, and importantly as well, being designed for working adults, um, because we're all, we've all got different schedules, you know, it doesn't matter where we are, um, but you can listen to recordings. So for whatever reason, um, if you do miss your class, and Calista, you've probably done this already, and I know Vicky as well, um, that you know, it's okay. It's you know we're, we're not we're not going to get a big stick out. We're adults. We're not going to tell you off for not going to a webinar. But it's like that's okay. Um, connect with the class through forums or listen to your webinar or yeah. the recording. So I mean, even with um, the students in Australia, they study in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So. It works, it actually is very beneficial for our students in Canada that are studying because like, you know, Calista went through this as well with the, the study times, like you, students tend to study in the afternoon and we will hold the webinar for our students in Canada in the afternoon. So our teachers here will hold the webinar around like 9.30 a.m. Um, so, you know, an hour before now would be like a webinar time, um, which means that you're able to, to get on in the afternoon and, and watch the webinar. And you'll know the time. So um, your first class leadership, it will be picked for you. So you'll be in, you'll be in your class and there will be, you'll be in the time zone for Canada. But then after that, you actually see the times um, available at the top where you're able to select a time that works for you. So you'll see a few different times and you can work out what time works for you. Again, it will be in the afternoon. It's always going to be in the afternoon, even for students here. I mean, some students might want to, you know, pick the start, the, the webinar time for 9.30 a.m. So that's sometimes, you know, Calista might see some Australians in her, her webinar. They might join. I've seen both, yeah. We, yeah, I'm only a couple hours from Toronto. And um, like, like you mentioned, there's a couple options to select from. So you just kind of look at the time in Adelaide time, you convert it to... Uh, the time you're in and you go, yeah, this, this will work for me. But to be completely honest, I do a lot of the webinars after the fact. So right now <laughs> I actually have a webinar going on for my HR class, but right after this, I'm just going to go and find the recording. And I, it's really easy too, because there's actually a transcript that's created too. And I find that super helpful to follow along the transcript or the closed captioning. Um, and then it's nice because you can pause it. You can also go back if you feel like you're, you don't understand something, or even when you're live in the webinar, you're like, okay, I had a question on this. 
guess I lost it. But if you remember it, you can always just go back. They're all recorded and they're all um, saved in the forums afterwards, so. Thank you. It's okay. It is super flexible and, um, you know, and, and it will vary from course to course. And, you know, some online facilitators will have at a different times and, um, you know, you can pick and choose recordings, all sorts, you know, and, and um, you do definitely fall into a bit of a, a rhythm and a groove as you're going along and you'll, and you'll um, I guess, um, fall into a groove that suits you. So you'll have habits, study habits of things that are right for you, I guess, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So. And Ashley's got a question here as well. So with the um, classes, so the classes start, um, so let's say you start on a Friday, the class will start the following week. So in the new week, and it will happen um, once a week. So your webinar will happen once a week. It will only go for one hour. Um, and it's purely just to go through that week's module. They'll go through that and like, yeah, they'll touch on the assessment as well. They'll answer your questions. Um, but yes, once a week, that's how the, the webinar works. Does that, does that help, Ashley? Yes, okay. oh, perfect. <laughs> but, and, 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 and expanding on that a little bit, Ashley, as well. So we have, um, throughout the year, we pretty much have a course going every month now, so, which is great. So as soon as, you know, let's say, for instance, if you enroll next week, then your, your next class would start at the end of October, I believe. Is that right? I think it is mm -hmm. end of October. So that happened regularly throughout the year. So very flexible. So I hope that helps. Any other questions? Oh yeah, so Ashley, you, you, oh yeah, sorry Lisa, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so our next intake that we've got and it's the last one for this year is on the 22nd of October. So that's the last intake for this year. And it also means, like I will mention this as well, it means that if you start on the 22nd of October, you actually lock in your course fees um, for what they are this year. So we have like a um, Retessa payment plan and it just means that you actually lock in the course fees for what they are this year and you don't, you're not going to have the fee increase for the new year. So um, just be aware of that as well. But, but also, as well, I think more importantly, um, with if you did start in our final fall intake, it means that what would happen by next year, you'd actually have your first um, stage done, I think, by the Before summer. summer, yeah. Ah, so if anyone's thinking maybe a summer break next year, you can get a stage done before then. That's just another thing to add, <laughs> yeah. So you can actually, yeah, you get, you will be qualified before summer and then if you want to have time off, you can. But again, you can take your time off whenever whenever you like. Mm. So it's up to you how you do it. We don't follow the traditional, um, you know, schedule with semesters. We've got intakes that are happening every um, two months. So, well, multiple subjects happen every two months. So multiple subjects will be offered every two months. So if you ever want to take time off, just, you know, just keep in mind the next two months, there'll be more subjects you can enroll into. But I think the urgent thing at the moment as well as the fact that at the moment, it's our final fall intake for you. So if, you, if the MBA is on your mind, you think, oh, geez, should I get started sooner than later? Then we've got one more course happening ahead of the, the holiday season. So it's got our final fall intake happening at the moment. So we encourage you to speak to your course advisor, which can help you with any admissions questions that you might have and um, how to get started as well. James Dean, you've got a question. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> oh, come back, James. <laughs> There we are. There we go. <laughs> my apologies. Um, my question is, if someone starts the program and the, uh, initially during application didn't indi indicate they wanted to apply for an exemption or advanced standing or credit, can they do that at any time in the program prior to graduation? Definitely. Yep. Okay. 100%. Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely. Hope that covers that. Thank you. Yeah, so Perfect. if you're doing anything, if you're doing like a CPA qualification um, and you want to apply for that after, you know, while you're doing your studies, then definitely at any point you can apply for an exemption. Perfect, thank you. 
So, so Calista, I want to go back to oh, so I have another question there. Okay, excellent. So, Calista, I'm going to put you in the hot seat. I didn't remember. <laughs> I asked. I asked you earlier. Um, so, you know, you, you, you're doing fantastically well, and you're moving through your MBA at the moment. So. But what can you see happening in the next few years? Let's let's um, picture it now. You're, you've done your graduation and you've got your parchment and you've got your MBA. What does the future look like for you now? That's a big question. Um, and it's really hard to look into the future, but I can say that I wasn't expecting to be in a management role at this point. And I know that my MBA and taking this really did help get me there. So, um, I said, my goal is to be a, eligible to be a director one day. I think that I'll be set up well for that after this, but also I'll have a network of people that who knows, maybe a job will open in Australia, I can go there. Um, but also I just think, um, yeah, it's just gonna prepare me a lot more for what's ahead for me in um, my career path, but also just meeting all the great people in the program. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely, it's very exciting. and. And that is the the, um, the the great unknown is exciting, but it sounds like that you're really well and truly um, not only on your way to, to further success as you've already had, but um, really love the fact that you're you know you're empowering yourself. You sound more confident. You're learning. Um, it sounds like you're really enjoying the learning experience along the way and meeting people. So it just, it's just a wonderful story. Same with you, Vicky. Too. We're very proud of you too. You've only got one more stage to go. Yeah. Four more subjects. <laughs> not counting. Not counting at all. <laughs> But yeah, is there any other questions? If you do have any other questions, please let us know. Please let your course advisor know. Send them through a um, email, and they can give you a call. Um, yes, we're we're here to help. So please let us know at any point. Absolutely. So before we wrap up, so please, did you have any sort of final um, key insights that you'd like to share? Any, any sort of um, yeah, thoughts? Um, I think, um, as I mentioned, I came to this presentation, this exact type of presentation, when I was making my decision, and it was helpful to see what a current student would say. So I'm flattered, first off, to be here and to talk about my experience. And um, I honestly feel like if I can do this, anybody in whatever field they're in could. Um, I, I read all the materials that said, you know, this percentage of students said that they wish they started sooner. And I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But I can honestly say that I wish that I did start sooner. And it goes by fast. You just find a flow, you get in the zone, and you just get it done. And it has become immensely helpful for me so far. Amazing. That's so good to hear. And that's great to hear that you joined one of our Zoom sessions. <laughs> yeah, and then, and yeah your, I did. And now... I, <laughs> You're hosting a Zoom session, so it's, yeah. <laughs> I think we had another question. Oh. Christine. Oh, uh, Christine. But your camera went off. Oh, uh, Christine. <laughs> no, I was just saying good night. Oh. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh, good night. Yes, I know it's your evening. Oh, so it's night for us. Yes, it's, I know. it's uh, it's 9 17 p.m so oh, I, wow. it sounded like you're wrapping up i wasn't sure if you were or not <laughs> so I was we are we are that's great no yes have a lovely night and yes. yeah thank it's you just our morning here <laughs> no, no, thank you all for attending thank you so much Vicky, for, for presenting today as well and Callista, we really really valued your insights thank yes. you so much thank you um, and we hope to see you down in Australia sooner than later. And um, we, we hope to see you next year when we get back to Canada and travelling as well. All of you, all of you, when you're all graduating, <laughs> Come on we want to see you here. <laughs> Amazing. Or we can have a graduation there, maybe that would even be that would be amazing. We want to go. No, there. we need to have it in Australia. <laughs> you want to go? Yes. Yeah. Amazing. It's so good. Fantastic. All right, everybody. So. We'll wrap that up today. Um, thank you. Stay safe and well. Um, interesting to